Andrew Glazer here from glazertutoring.com, and today I would like to teach you how to use the rational zero theorem to find the real zeros of this function of x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 8x plus 12. Okay, so what in the world is the rational zero theorem? Well, basically it says this, that if you find the factors of your constant term in the polynomial function, and you call those factors p, you can call whatever you like, but traditionally it's called p. And then you take the factors of the leading coefficient, which is the coefficient in front of the highest power of x in your polynomial function, which in this case is a 1, and you call those factors q. Then take the p values divided by the q values, and this will give you a list of possible rational real zeros. Not all of them will work. Maybe none will work. We'll see. Okay? But that's the idea. Now... What are then the factors of 12? And remember, factors are going to be whole numbers that multiply to each other or multiply uh, to give you a value of 12. So obviously it's going to be 1 and 12, then 2 and 6, and it sounds to me like there's going to be two more, 3 and 4. Now each of these comes with a plus and minus because you can take the two positives and multiply them together or the two negatives. All right, and then divide it by the factors of the leading coefficient there, which is 1 times 1, but you wouldn't write 1 twice. Almost looks like 11, but it would be plus and minus 1, okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to take, and you're going to take now each individual case. So if you had, let's say, I don't know if this was a positive or minus 3, what you'd have to do is do 1 over 1, Oops, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, etc. And then 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 3 over 3, etc. Right? You'd have a lot of possibilities with this one. In this particular case, what you're going to do is you just do the division. So plus minus 1 divided by plus minus 1 gives you a plus minus 1. Plus minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1 gives you a plus or minus 2. Plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 1, I think you're going to see the pattern, gives you this. The next one's going to give you that. The one after that is going to give you this, and the one after that is going to give you that. So basically, it looks like you have six values, but in reality, you have 12, because there's positive and negatives for each of them. So you really have 12 values, positive one, then you have a negative one, then you have a positive two, then you have a negative two, etc. Okay. Now what you basically found now is that this is a list of possible zeros. The only way to check now... All right, without using a calculator or anything, is going to be to guess one of the 12 and plug it in for x. If that value, whatever you plugged in, overall results when you evaluate this in a value of 0, then the value of x you've plugged in is considered a 0 of the function. It is a value of x. Remember, 0 of a function is the value of x that results in an overall value of 0 for the function. So let's just test this out for 1. So you plug in 1 here in terms of x, you raise it to the 4th, minus then 2. This is going to be 1 cubed, minus 7 times 1 squared, plus 8 times, eh, what happened to the 8? 8 times 1, plus then 12. Let's see if this equals 0. So this is 4. Uh, what? This is 1. I wrote 1. I said 4 because I'm looking at the next number. Minus then 4, minus 7, plus 8 plus 12. This is not looking too, po you know, too likely. Does this equal zero? I don't think so. I don't think that equals zero. What that means, what that means is that the value you plugged in, positive one, is not a zero. It's not a rational, it's not a real zero. So you have 11 left. Doesn't this sound like fun? This is a little bit kind of crazy if you ask me. Now, Basically, I'm going to use the calculator as a guide here. I mean, you can you can guess all 12, right? But you know, I want to. I don't. I don't want to be here for the next three hours. So, um, although I would love to spend three hours with you, I just just on this one problem, I don't. You know, I'm going to lose my mind. So, um, and we have thousands of videos out there, by the way. So I can spend more than three hours. I could probably spend thousands of hours with you. All right, if you really like, check out the channel. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in this function. So x raised to the fourth, then minus 2x raised to the third. Then I'm going to do minus 7x, then plus 8x, and then plus 12. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this thing. 
and I might be zoomed in a little bit too much. So let me zoom out. So let me go three. That's not a good sign. Where the hell's the graph? Let me zoom out again. Oh, there it is. All right. So fortunately, we get to see something of it. Now, the thing, though, here is that this graph, I know this is, uh, let me let me just try to adjust the window so we kind of see this a little better. Let me go window. Let me go X min. Let's go to negative 10 because I don't think we need to go out to 40. X max should be 10. The Y maximum will leave it 40 and we'll go, we'll start at zero. All right, this might get us a little bit of a better and we'll go up by 10 units. The scale on that and then the scale, yeah, that could stay. That could stay that, that's fine. So let's hit graph, yeah. So if you notice now, um, here's the x-axis at the bottom. This represents a y value of zero. And this function now does not cross the x-axis. Now you have to keep in mind, you wanna know two things, you know, you have to know things algebraically and you should also know things kind of graphically. A real zero is produced for a function when the graph crosses the x-axis when it intersects or touches that x-axis, okay? If the graph does not cross or touch or intersect the x-axis, that means that all the zeros are going to be imaginary. They're imaginary, okay? So what that means is that none of these values are going to work because these are all possible real zeros. I didn't, and that's the thing, this theorem just tells you what's possible. Who knows if any of them is going to work? And in this problem, none of them are going to work. And go, feel free. Plug all 12 of them in. Nothing's going to give you a zero. What that means then is that all of the zeros are imaginary. Okay? And what that means is that there are no real zeros for this function. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Remember, that was the goal of the video. It's not to find the zeros. It's just to find the real zeros. So keep it real, all right? We're going to try to do the same. Check out our channel because, like I mentioned, we got thousands of videos, not only math, but physics and chemistry as well. We want to help you through your coursework. And we solve specific problems because guess what you're going to see on your test? Questions and problems, right? So do some of those practice questions on your own. And then if you struggle, we have a video. We got your back. And that's the best way to study for your exams. It's the most efficient way. We'd love to help you with more. Take care.